I have nothing to say during this intro. Hello everyone, I'm back again with a new video. This time I'm going to show you how to design, print, and make your very own CD in a regular CD jewel case like this one. It shocks me that all the time that I've been doing musical packaging, I have failed to do a tutorial for this type of packaging, when in reality this packaging is probably the most common that we have so far. And while there are plenty tutorials on how to make this type of packaging on YouTube, some of you guys were really interested on how I could show you how to do it. So I decided why not? And I'm going to share my tips on how to have the booklet perfectly fine for your packaging because sometimes that could be an issue. So I'm going to show you how to make the back, the booklet, and also the CD label, and even how to use an insert if the plastic tray it's transparent. So with that being said, let's get started. Start off by going to the description of this video and click on the link available to you. This will take you to my OneDrive folder. In there, there will be three folders. Select the folder labeled Templates. Once inside, find the file named To Booklet New, select it and download it. Once it has downloaded, open it using Photoshop. The file should look something like this. Notice that there is a border going around the whole file. This was made since some of you mentioned that when printing out the booklet on both sides, some of the images came lopsided. To avoid that, I came up with a solution. Basically, the inside of the page needs to be extended to the edges, since the outside will be the page to guide the one on the inside. I'll explain more in a minute. So start by placing the page that will go on the outside. Next place the second page, this is the one that has to reach the edges, to have a safe zone in case the booklet prints off. In this case, since the background of my booklet is solid, I am just going to use the dropper tool to get the color of the page and then use the paint bucket tool to paint the edges of the same color. Now I know that you might be thinking, what if I have an image as a background instead of solid colors? Well, the process is somehow similar. All that you have to do is extend the image to the edges of the file to fill them up. For example, my image does extend nicely to the edges because even though some parts of it are going to get cut, it is nothing major. Just make sure no text or important images or information are near the edges as they run the risk of being cut. And you need to do this every two pages. For example, if you have six pages, page two, four, and six should get the edges extended. After you have all the pages set up, I would recommend you to rename the layers to pages you will be working with. Here is where you will start to divide the pages. I recommend you to mark the pages that do not need to get divided, like the first page never gets divided as well as the page that is usually in the middle of the booklet. So mark them to remind you that those stay the same. Now what you need to do is the following. Hide the layer visibility of all the layers that you are not using at the moment. Using the marquee tool, select half of the image and left click it. This will open a window where you will select the option layer via cut. Click on it and this will divide the image in two. Rename the layer. The image on the left, name it page 2A and the one on the right, page 2B. And repeat it with all the layers, except for the ones that we mentioned that do not get divided. Now, move away from the computer for a while and grab a scrap piece of paper and cut it in equal parts to represent the pages of the booklet. For example, my booklet is six pages, so I just need three pieces of paper. This is to make a mock-up of the booklet. The size of the pieces don't really matter. Fold them in half and place them on top of each other until it resembles a booklet. With a pencil, start labeling the pages. The page from outside, label it page one. And once you start going inside, here is where you need to start labeling the pages on the left and on the right. For example, my second page, I label the left page 2A and the one on the right page 2B and so on and so forth except for the page in the middle. Once you have marked all of the mock-up pages, take a piece of paper to take some notes. Open the pages and start making notes on where the pages are. For example, 
my first page is the one that does not get divided, so I'll just list it as page 1 and make sure to mark it as an out page since it's the one that does not have the edges extended. The second one is where it already gets mixed. Once you have all the notes, this is what we will use to join the pages together. Go back to Photoshop and merge the layers together. For example, my second page is composed of 2A and 6B. So merge them together and rename them page 2. Then I follow with 6A and 2B and join them together and rename it to page 3 and so on. And the last page will be the page that goes in the middle. At the moment, it looks like everything is out of order, but this will come together once we put the booklet together. Once you have your pages ready, go back to the description of this video and this time open the folder titled Paper Size. Select the A4 file and download it and open it using Photoshop. Once it's open, copy page 1 of your booklet and paste it onto the A4 file. It should place itself in the middle. Then do the same thing for page 2. Since my page is solid, I decided to paint the whole rest of the page to make super sure it will come perfectly, but this is optional. You can just leave the edges like we did before. This will be your first page. Page 1 and page 2 will print on the same page and just repeat the same thing until you print out the whole book. Once it is printed, start by cutting the pages, using the side that did not have the edges extended as a guide. Once they have all been cut, fold them in half and proceed by putting them on top of each other, following your original sequence. Using a ruler, mark around 2.5 centimeters from each of the edges of the folds so the top and the bottom. Now, take some washi tape and remove some of the stickiness using your forearm, since we just need to hold it together for a few seconds and not permanently. Stick all the pages together using small pieces of the tape. After the previous step, take a stapler and a piece of foam and staple the middle while having the booklet open from the marks you made earlier. Then, pull the staples from the piece of foam and flip the booklet. Using an object, like the cap of a glue stick, Push the prongs of the staple down to secure the page. If by any chance some pieces of your booklet are flying out, just trim it down using a ruler and a craft knife. Don't forget to carefully remove the tape and we're done with the booklet. For the back insert of the CD, I'll go back to the link I provided in the description and open the folder templates and download the file named CD Back Cover and open it using Photoshop. Once it opens, you will note that it has some edges as well, but they are not made yet. Ignore them if your case has a tray that is solid like mine. Just set the image on the file, and if you have a transparent tray and you want to use an image inside, first get your back and set it up. Then using the cropper tool, pull the file to these marks. This will be the inside of the tray since we are going to print it on both sides. Just like the booklet, it needs to have some room in case it prints lopsided. So, place the image you want on the inside of your CD and extend it past the edges. Make sure that nothing important is on the edges. As I have mentioned before, this runs the risk of getting cut and we only have them in case the image moves a little bit while printing. Paste the image, or images if you have a double set image, on the A4 sheet of paper and print it out. Mine printed a lot lopsided, <laughs> but since this does not have an inner image, it's fine. Just cut it out and fold the tabs and you're good to go. If your image are double sided, you can see that the one that had the edges did in fact print it a little bit off. That's why we use this technique to avoid any errors or mistakes. For this one, just repeat the same steps cut it out, fold the tabs, and place it onto the CD case with the tray on top. Now for the CD label, it's quite simple. You know the drill, go to the link, open it and go to the template folders and download the file 3 CD label and open it using Photoshop. I've updated this file with the text on the edges. Some CDs have it with information about the album. You can use it if you want, just select it with the text tool to write on there. If you're not going to use it, just delete the layer. For the design itself, just place it underneath the text layer if you're using it and the Ellipse 3 layer. Merge everything together and copy it and place it onto an A4 sheet of paper and set it as needed and print it out either on regular paper or on sticker paper. If it is on regular paper, just cut the design out using a combination of scissors, a craft knife, and glue it on place. 
either with spray adhesive or with glue stick, but never with liquid glue. Or if you're using a sticker paper, just stick it on top and making sure that it stays perfectly fine. And just like that, your whole CD is done. And that is it for this video guys. This is not sponsor or anything, but actually this album is by Julie Strawbridge, a YouTuber. And I fell in love with this album during quarantine and I decided to make it physically. She already knows this exists. Um, we interacted on in Instagram. So I'm just um, giving you a heads up. If you want to listen to her music, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description. Honestly, this is like one of the best albums I've heard in 2020. So that's why I wanted to have it physically. Um, so yeah, give it a listen if you can. It's on the description down below. And that is it for this video, guys. I hope you like it. If you like it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are, you know I'm really thankful for that. Don't forget that you can follow me on my social medias at Crafter Training. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.